It is a tough job cooling your vital PC components. Luckily, Thermaltake has some pretty good fans that might suit the bill. The Thermaltake Tough Fan 12 and 12 Turbo. Let's check them out, and welcome to Computer Tech and More. Before we get into the graphs and charts comparing these fans versus, well, a bunch of other fans I've uh, done reviews for, uh, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and check out my Patreon page. It's viewers like you that help support this channel so that I can acquire better testing equipment to improve my accuracy. Before we get into the graphs, here is the raw data for the Tough Fan 12 and the Thermaltake Tough Fan 12 Turbo. If you want to use this data for yourself for your own purposes, you may go ahead and do so. However, if you use this data in your own video, I ask that you give me credit because I'm the one who generated the data. Alright, let's jump to the graphs. This graph is vertical, airspeed, horizontal is distance from the fan. So what we're looking for is hor as horizontal a line as possible. So this is how efficient the fan is at pushing air through a case or a case simulation. And uh, hor more horizontal is better and more linear is better. The steeper the drop off indicates that the fan tends to disperse air widely rather than creating a nice concentrated airflow, which is what I personally like to see in a case airflow fan. Let's jump to the turbo. And this is the turbo variant of the Tough Fan 12. But all these don't mean anything without any reference points. So let's take a look at the next graphs. This graph is RPM versus airspeed. So this is a graph indicating how efficient the blade design is on the fan. My control fan is uh, a like 90%, 80% uh, A12X25 with a little bit of Noctua uh, A14 mixed into it just because I'm comparing, using it to compare both 120 and 140 millimeter size fans. So I did some averaging math to get it in there. And we can clearly see that the P12 and Turbo follow pretty much the exact same line which is good because the blades are exactly the same the two fans should be identical um as how they compare to my control fan well they outperform it by a little bit and before i forget my margin of error on airspeed measurements is approximately 0.1 meter per second my margin of error in noise is less than five decibels this next graph is RPM versus CFM, cubic feet per minute of airflow. And my control line is still that blue line. The Tough and Regular 12 uh, is underperforming the turbo by a little bit. So if I, if I ran enough fans, they'd average out to be in the middle, but I only have one sample of each fan. So this is what it is. And they underperform my control fan by a little bit. Taking a look at noise performance versus CFM. So a better fan is going to sit over here. A worse fan is going to be sitting down here. The turbo and the non-turbo basically lap around my control fan. They sit on either side of it. So again, this leads me to believe that if I had enough of these fans, they'd average out to be sitting exactly on that same line or pretty close to it. But looking as it, at it as was it what it is, the regular... Tough Fan 12 is able to outperform my control fan by a little bit, while the turbo is a little bit worse, at least until you hit uh, their top performance mark where it tends to just kind of level out. In noise versus RPM, so this is a efficiency type one where it's how good is the noise profile of the fan at a given rotational speed. Blue is again the control, the aqua is the regular turbo, or regular tough fan, and the red is the turbo. They're within margin of error. Just put it simply as that. Let's jump to the next graph. This graph is noise normalized distance from the fan, horizontal versus airspeed vertical. So this is comparing it, uh, noise normalized fans versus my control fan. And we can basically see that they kind of lap each other. It's actually kind of an interesting result where the regular fan outperformed the turbo version and they both, well, 
the uh, turbo initially started off basically I, exactly the same as my control, and then it drops off at the end. This is where the control kind of uh, compensates for itself because the control has a little bit of 140 millimeter size fan in it, which makes an interesting result for the regular uh, tough fan 12. Let's see how they look at 100% PWM. This is 100% PWM for that same sort of graph. And we can see that a lot of things have corrected themselves. The airflow doesn't drop off as steeply at the end for the Tough Fan 12 Turbo. Um, looking at the, the legend for the graph, here's the RPM. This is the noise, RPM, noise. And this just lets the fans run full tilt what their maximum is. So the final fan airspeed at the, at the back of my airflow test, the regular uh, Tough Fan 12 actually did a little bit better than the Turbo, despite the different RPMs. Um, but how does this compare with all the other fans? Well, let's jump into those graphs. First up is the 120 millimeter noise normalized airspeed through an air cooler. The Tough Fan 12 was able to achieve 1.4 meters per second of air, which is good for just over 190 watts of cooling on my particular air cooler. And I want to reiterate this a couple times. Your air cooler will perform differently unless you have the exact same model as mine. But if let's say you have some janky air cooler and you have a uh, Arctic F12 on it, I don't know, it's pushing 1.6 meters per second of air. Jumping up to the Tough Fan 12 will greatly improve the performance of your particular air cooler. So you can use this as a reference. Point. So if you have an air, a fan on your cooler that's one of these and you want to improve your cooling without buying a whole new air cooler, well, you can get one of the better fans on it. If you already have one of the better fans, then it's time to get a better cooler. So it's just a reference point. Uh, jumping to the Tough Fan Turbo, it achieved 1.2 meters per second of airflow. So it didn't quite get the same sort of capacity as... Um, the non-turbo counterpart. For reference, the NFA12X25 achieved 1.2 meters per second of airflow, so there's some round off error between these two fans. Uh, and the Silent Wings 4 Pro is up here at the top of our graphs. Let's take a look at 100% PWM. So letting the fans go full tilt, maximum velocity. Who is at the, how do these two fans rate? Well, here's the Tough Fan 12 Turbo at 2.2 meters per second of airflow, functionally tying to Wonder Snail. Uh, despite the Wonder Snail spinning at a slower RPM, they have functionally equivalent uh, noise values, which is good for like 230 some odd watts of cooling on my cooler. The Tough Fan 12 achieved the same performance rating as my Noctua A12X25, despite its slower RPM, but it was a little bit noisier. The airspeed is 1.9 meters per second of airflow. That is good for approximately 220-ish watts of cooling on my cooler. Uh, the Noctua A12X25, 49.5, and so once we're looking at over 2,100-ish RPMs, we take this jump up to 3,000 watt or 3,000 RPM fans, not 3,000 watts, that's silly. Uh, you have the Silent Wings 4 Pro at 2.6, and then their absolute top performers are two Noctuas, the F12 and the A14, and the T30. Note for the T30, it is a thicker, fan and the brackets that come with your Noctua cooler are not going to work on that fan, so you would have to figure out some other way of mounting it to it. But all that extra performance it does come at a cost. They are significantly noisier than other fans. With the T30 being at 60 decibels, the two Noctuas at 69 and 64 respectively, and the Silent Wings 4 Pro at 53.4 decibels, which is a truly impressive uh, result for that Silent Wings 4 Pro. It is not significantly noisier than other fans. Next up is one of the fan graphs I like to call Kicks and Giggles because it has so many fans on it that it's actually hard to read it without being able to click on each of the lines independently. So let's work our way through. Right here at the top we have the Tough Fan 12, but it drops off a little bit but kind of matches over here. 
This green line represents the Wonder Snail, which did very well in this testing. This red line is the Silent Wings 4 Pro. And the Tough Fan 12 Turbo is this one, which drops off pretty significantly at the end. A couple, a couple other notable notes, this is the A12X25, and right here at the bottom of the graphs, we have the likes of the Noctua P12 Redux, the T30, and the NFS12B. Let's see how they look at 100% PWM. So at maximum performance, we have the Silent Wings 4 Pro here at the top of the graphs. We have the 140 millimeter version of the same fan. And we have the T30, but it drops off pretty significantly at the end. Blue line is the Tough Fan 12, which starts off towards the top and then kind of becomes middle of the pack and it's very hard to determine where it sits. Just highlighted the A12X25, which sits a little bit towards the top of the pack, but is still pretty much muddled in the middle. And the Tough Fan Regular is towards the top of the middle, but functionally in the middle of the graphs. Taking a more simplified view of this data, I did Noise Normalized at that 9-inch mark, and the Tough Fan 12 sits right here at the top of the graphs, moving 1.8 meters per second of airflow. Uh, the noise normalized value is 40 decibels by my readings. The Tough Fan Turbo is in here at 1.4 meters per second of airflow. So they kind of uh, lump around the A12X25, which moved 1.5 meters per second of airflow. So overall, they are both very good results. Let's take a look at 100%. This is 100% PWM. So 3,000 RPM fans are going to be at the top of the graph because they can just push the most air, which is why the T30, despite its screaming 60 decibels, is right here at the top. As for the tough fans, well, here's the tough fan turbo moving 2.2 meters per second of air. Not a bad result. The tough fan 12 is sitting right here at 2.3 meters per second of airflow. So interestingly, it outperforms its turbo counterpart at less noise. Four, nine inches from the fan. In terms of raw CFM values, so that's cubic feet per minute, the Tough Fan 12 is sitting here right at the top at 45.6 cubic feet per minute of airflow, which outperforms the A12X25 by not so insignificant amount. The Turbo is sitting a little bit lower at 40.7 cubic feet per minute of airflow. The T30, the Silent Wings 4 Pro are sitting right around those top end values. 100% PWM, the 3000 RPM T30 is sitting at the top. And the uh, Tough Fan 12 Turbo is sitting right here, moving 70, 76 cubic feet per minute of airflow. The A12X25 moving 70.4 for functionally equivalent. Uh, noise levels. F Tough Fan 12 moves a little bit further back in the graphs with a similar noise level of 48, making it kind of more uh, in the middle of the pack in a raw uh, volume of air that the fan is able to push with the other fans that you can see in this graph. Thermal Tank Tough Fan 100% PWM. Thermal tank, tough fan, turbo, 100% PWM. Also, take to take this opportunity to remind you that I've updated these fan graphs. I found some errors uh, because I changed out my anemometer from a non app version to an app version, and I forgot to recheck my first 10 fans that I tested before doing my first set of filming. I've since corrected it for uh, this fan, this video, 
and all future videos. So you may have seen some fans jump in their performance values, and that would be why. Uh, moving forward, I'm going to be using the same anemometer, so let's get back into these graphs. So this is CFM versus decibels. Decibel readings is the horizontal, and the vertical is uh, CFM. So better fans are sitting over here, worse fans are sitting down here, with the bottom performer here being the P12 from Arctic, with one of the top performers being the Silent Wings 4 Pro 120, Redline being the Tough Fan 12. It performs really quite well. E12 Turbo performs slightly worse, but still among the best. Reference right here is the A12X25. So the P12, or not P12, the Tough Fan 12 really is within margin of error of the A12X25. Uh, jumping or moving our sights to uh, performance uh, versus decibels through the air cooler. So uh, air speed is vertical and horizontal is decibels. Better fans again are over here. The Tough Fan 12 regulars highlighted here in red. The turbo version is right here in green. Both of them are functionally right at the top of the graph. They don't have the same sort of top end performance as some of the other fans. But in a uh, performance per noise uh, equation, they do really quite well. You can look at these fans at the 6-inch mark, uh, case airspeed versus decibel readings. The tough fan regular is highlighted here in orange. Sitting right at the top of the graphs, the Silo Wings 4 Pro 120 is superior. Highlighted currently is the A12X25, and right here is the Tough Fan 12 Turbo. So, any of these fans are functionally right at the top of the graph. Now that we've finished uh, going over the testing and the different uh, graphs and charts for these two fans, let's take a look at the boxes and do a little open box experience. So the Tough Fan 12 and 12 Turbo are basically the exact same fan with slightly different colorations and maximum RPMs. So both are rated for as radiator fans. Um, the regular can push 2.41 millimeters of H2O, while the turbo can do 3.78. That is a very high number, but mind, these are at maximum RPMs. Decibel rating is 28.1 versus 22.3, and the RPM range is 2,500 versus 2,000. So uh, we could see from the graphs just how much uh, effect that maximum RPM actually had on the fan performance, and it was pretty substantial. Next, looking at the back of the box, basically a lot of the same information, 9 volts, 12 volts, uh, amperage is 0.23 versus 0.1 or 0.12. Uh, so keep that in mind. When you're hooking this up to um, more than one fan onto a fan header, you uh, may overload the circuitry or um, essentially not be able to provide enough power to run all the fans at maximum power on the turbo version. Maximum wattage is 2.76 versus 1.44. We already did the RPMs. And the H2O CFM is 72.69 on the box and 58.35. We did the decibels, uh, hydraulic bearing Gen 2, uh, lifespan is 40,000 hours at 25 degrees C, uh, 4 pin, low noise, yep, that's basically everything on the box. Alright, let's take a look at the fans. The Thermal Take Tough Fan is often compared to the Noctua NF A12X25, so I grabbed one of my uh, AX or A12X25s to uh, do a little uh, visual comparison. And uh, first and foremost, you can see that the blade angle and sweep looks near on identical, but the frames are very different. So um, in a radiator, uh, you really want a square frame that'll lock into it. And actually Noctua sells 
this little um, gasket, which helps seal it right up against a radiator so that air can't seek out the side, which greatly improves efficiency. And doing a quick analysis of this frame, this is a gap, that's a gap. These are all gaps around here. Now, uh, this part right around the fan, the circle region, might enclose it, but often when you screw into a radiator, um, there's, there's going to be a little lift off. So this is areas that air can escape. So efficiency will be lost. Unfortunately, I don't have a radiator to test on it this time. Um, so I can't do that full analysis on it to know just how effective it is as opposed to the A12X25, especially at uh, like noise normalized or even comparing various or a steady RPM. But this might be a weakness in its design. The next major difference is on the blades themselves. On Noctua's, you see these little ridges. These help direct and channel airflow. On the Thermaltake Tech Tough Fan, they're just smooth. The fan blades are completely smooth front and back. So uh, we can see the various effects that I had on performance based on the graphs, so we're not going to cover that. Uh, let's go for some similarities. They have feature very similar materials. I forget what uh, not it's called specifically, but the hub diameter looks very similar. Matter of fact, the build looks very similar. But when we flip over to the back, and uh, I know I've been mostly using the turbo, but the, the regular is identical, so it doesn't make a difference. When we flip over to the back, we can see more supports, uh, which can be used to direct airflow, as uh, seen on other fan designs, but it can also impede or increase the noise of a fan. But uh, in my testing, I found them to be pretty quiet, so I don't think that's the case. The shape of them is pretty aerodynamic. They're pretty sh uh, aerodynamically shaped on the top, as in sharp, and they are angled uh, so that, really hard to show on camera, so the the tip of it, the point, is over here, and then it angles the air in the other direction. So that actually actually helps direct the airflow. Um, the Noctua's really channel the air with this kind of ducted design, while uh, Thermal Takes is basically just straight on. Um, the pads are removable, and if you take one of Noctua's pads. It sort of fits, but they're a different shape mostly. So you might be able to jerry-rig the gasket to fit on this fan, but um, definitely wouldn't be a fit right off. But these uh, vibration dampers, these uh, rubber silicone pads actually will reduce the amount of vibration going into your case, which does reduce the noise a little bit. Um, but also very important for if you still have mechanical hard drives in it, it just reduces the amount of vibration that actually travel into your case. Um, I'm not really sure what else there is to say, so uh, let's go on to the conclusion. Okay, we are on to our value proposition. So this is performance per dollar, my performance being an air speed and dollar being whatever the dollar value for the fan is. Speaking of which, the Tough Fan 12 is rated at $26. The Tough Fan 12 Turbo is rated at $30. Price is more or less in line with high performance fans currently on the market. As for how they do value wise, at a six inch mark, they are kind of more or less average. They're not, they're maybe a little bit above average, not, not significantly. Uh, looking at 100% PWM, more or less the same. They sit right at that average fan mark. Let's see how they do with the nine inch. So at nine inches from the fan and noise normalized testing, they sit a little bit above average with the turbo and non-turbo, the non-turbo doing significantly better in that value proposition because they've got the same speed or functionally the same speed at a noise normalized test and they should have similar noise properties. So you're basically paying extra for no extra performance in this case airflow. 
Um, compared to the A12 X25, they, the turbo is about equal to it, and they are basically middle of the pack. Once we're looking at 100% PWM, they kind of drop to middle of the road, actually maybe a, even a little bit below middle of the road in terms of that uh, value proposition. If you're wondering, these top fans are 140 millimeters and uh, they're a value proposition uh, rating there as well. Moving on to pure CFM, so that vo pure volume uh, of air that I can do per dollar, basically. And they are again middle of the road at a noise normalized. And at 100% PWM, they seem to drop off pretty significantly to be what I would say is below um, average. Uh, moving on to the last of these graphs, and this is uh, uh, that value proposition through a CPU cooler at noise normalized values. They are towards the top of the graph, not being at the super high end, but not at the bottom either. They do pretty well. At 100% PWM, they are basically middle of the road. So uh, what do I say about these fans as they are right now? Well, you could do worse, but you can also do better. So what I would say is depending on your budget or if you just really like this fan design, um, go with it or don't go with it. But uh, you definitely could do better and you definitely could do worse. So they are basically just plain average. All right, let's jump to the conclusion, which is probably going to sound a lot like this anyways. So in conclusion, uh, both these two fans in noise only testings are very good just across the board in pretty much every category that I'm able to test. Air cooler, my, my that thick heat, heat sink air cooler, uh, case at airflow, as well as its CFM testing. Just good across the board. At 100%, they're both still excellent, but the turbo does outperform the regular one, but it does have a higher RPM, so it's able to, well, just push more. This also has prompted me to retest the A12X25, not featured in the data set, uh, in this video because I just want to retest after I've done a bunch of fans to see if I got any abnormalities going on and it will also help me double check my consistency which is really the key for any type of testing is consistency so I'm going back and testing that if I find any add more, da uh, add more abnormalities I will go back and retest a bunch of fans that uh well, to get the data back up to snuff and uh, consistent. Um, okay. And as for the value proposition, they're both kind of middle of the road because they're they're not super expensive, but they are on the expensive side of things. Uh, so they're kind of middle of the road. They're they're not a great buy. They're not a bad buy. The turbo is slightly worse in value because it is a little bit more expensive and you don't get that much extra. So, long story short, if you're looking for a good all-around, all all-purpose fan, you uh, certainly can't go wrong with buying the Tough Fan 12 from Thermaltake. There, thank you very much for watching my video. Uh, again, please like and subscribe, and check out my Patreon page, and have a great day.